Now, in this edition of Battle of the Heroes and Villains, we'll be taking a look at the results of the poll that asked, what rating or grade would you give General Grievous? We'll then give him a score based on those results, and see how he compares to all the other characters we've done thus far, before then moving on to some of your comments about him. And speaking of other characters, you can of course already head down to the comments below to nominate which one we do next. Just reply to my pinned comment with your suggestion, or vote with a thumbs up if the one you'd like to see is already there. And since I get asked this a lot, to be clear, all characters from any and every aspect of Star Wars are eligible, be it new canon, old canon, movies, comics, animated shows, video games, wherever. Okay, all that said and cleared up, let's now take a look at the results, where we'll see that 20% of voters thought that General Grievous was an A-level character. 47% gave him a B, 27% a C, which then left 4% to give him a D, and a final 2% to give him an F. Which then means when we do all the math here, General Grievous ends up with a score of 3.79, which currently puts him into last place overall, and 9 hundredths of a point behind fellow prequel villain Count Dooku. And as time goes by and we get more characters covered or ranked, I may create some subcategories for comparison, while of course still maintaining and showing every week the overall rankings. Anyway, I can't say I'm all too surprised by these results. I figured he'd finish somewhere in the mid to high threes and be there neck and neck with Dooku when all was said and done. And the thing with Grievous, as is going to be the case with a lot of these characters, and has been with some we already covered, much will depend on which versions of these characters people know and how strongly that affects how they vote. And as always, the criteria for voting is completely up to the individual, and it's always interesting to read through the comments and see the reasoning behind the grades people give, and this week was no different. And speaking of that, let's now move on to those comments, but not before I again give a big thank you to everyone who votes and comments each and every week. The response to this new series has been fantastic, and I look forward to getting a great many more characters ranked and discussed as time goes by. Okay, so let's kick this off, as usual, with the top-rated comment, which this time came to us from Dan Esposito, who said, I love the character. From a design standpoint, I think he's one of the most unique characters in all of Star Wars. In my opinion, he was never really one of the most complex villains, but his desire to kill all Jedi was enough, to be honest. He is incredibly powerful and a great military leader. I love the rivalry he has with Obi-Wan during the Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith. My only issue with the character is that I wish we got to see more of him as a Jedi killer. I wish that he killed more Jedi during the Clone Wars to truly set himself up as a real threat. To my recollection, he only kills one Jedi in the Clone Wars. I guess I'd prefer if Grievous in canon was more like Grievous in Legends. However, when it comes to what we have in canon as it is, I still love the character a lot. I give him a B. And I agree here, it's a shame that in the Clone Wars or newer Clone Wars series, we only actually see Grievous kill one Jedi, that being Nadar Veb, who was a Padawan to Kit Fisto. And in the movie, he doesn't kill any Jedi, though showing off his lightsaber collection very much implies he's killed plenty of Jedi in the past. And originally, he was going to be shown executing Shock T early in the film, who the Jedi thought had followed him back to his ship during the Battle of Coruscant. And it was her tracking beacon that Anakin and Obi Wan were actually following to track down Grievous' ship or what ship he was on. But all that ultimately got cut. And in the 2003 Clone Wars series, you can actually see them sort of setting this up for the movie, since it's Shock T who essentially leads the Jedi trying to protect Palpatine but eventually Grievous catches up to them and abducts the Chancellor, and rather inexplicably seems to leave Shakti all tied up behind, instead of just killing her like he does with basically all other Jedi he encounters in that series. Grievous even says something along the lines of, I have other plans for you, but then just leaves her behind all tied up for Mace Windu to find. So obviously the show had to do a last minute change to keep in line with what the movie had gone with, where Shakti no longer gets abducted and killed in front of Obi-Wan and Anakin, even though, again, it doesn't really make much sense that Grievous would leave her behind instead of just killing her. Alright, let's now move on to this comment from Dark Apprentice, who said, I'm going mostly by the movie. He's one of the few characters who's actually worse in the Clone Wars cartoon, unless you count the 2D version, where he was at his best. But he was so drastically different in that version that it's hard to consider that canon, because he's virtually a completely different character in that show. Overall, I give him a C. 
We also had this comment from Pawar LOS who said, if he wasn't one of the few things Dave Filoni got wrong, he'd be an A. And I hate it, but I do have to agree with both of you. Normally, I'll sing the praises of Dave Filoni and the 2008 Clone Wars series all day long, but with Grievous, he dropped the ball. He's one character the Clone Wars, speaking of the 2008 series, made worse, not better. And he's not even a shell of what he was in the 2003 Clone Wars series, where he just is straight up a terrifying Jedi-killing machine. And if you've never seen the 2003 Clone Wars, it certainly is worth a watch, even today, or shameless plug time. You can check out the video I did the other day, which goes over the second volume of the original Clone Wars, which is a story that, though no longer canon, leads right up to the start of Revenge of the Sith and features Grievous as a whole different animal from what's seen in that movie or the newer Clone Wars. Okay, and moving on now, we have this comment from Willow Lackett, who said, He was terrifying and highly skillful in the unfortunately decanonized show Star Wars Clone Wars, a true threat to the Republic and the Jedi, a true Jedi killer. However, he became somewhat of a silly hunk of metal in the Clone Wars, often being used for comic relief or being easily beaten by a few astromechs or a group of Gungans. I have to give him a C rating because of this. He has potential and his early appearances are truly masterful, but he's no longer the great cyborg assassin from the early to mid-2000s. Again here, I do have to agree, and in hindsight, which is always 2020, I almost wish the newer Clone Wars series had used him a lot less, and instead maybe reserved him for just a few, shall we say, scary appearances where he stalked and killed the Jedi, or they ended up having to run from him, which would have been more in line with the original version from the 2003 series. Maybe they could have even given us a backstory arc about him. This was an anthology-style show, so they really could have done anything they wanted with him. Anyway, instead of Grievous being the low villain on the totem pole, if you will, the one who always gets defeated, maybe give us a few brand new villains to be the ones who lose to the heroes all the time. You could even have the heroes kill those villains instead of Grievous having to run away because we know he survives up to Revenge of the Sith. This way, instead of it oftentimes being Grievous who is the villain of the week, or the one who was always running away, shaking his fist in anger, saying, I'll get you next time. We could have a few others filling that role, and so on the rare times Grievous does show up, we know stuff is about to get real. Okay, next up here we have this comment from Lance Curry, who gives us a nice rundown on the character's original origin. Oh Grievous, where do we begin? A fallen warlord heralded as a god by his people, he lost his beloved Rondru during the Hawk War, and the Jedi decimated his people. He became a thrall to Sandhill of the Banking Clan, and due to a disastrous shuttle crash, was reduced to a dying husk of his former self. In order to save him, Sandhill transferred his salvageable body parts into a cyborg body. He was elected to become the supreme commander of the droid army, and accepted on the premise that he would destroy the Jedi to avenge his people. A terrifying warrior and tactical genius, he collects the lightsabers of his fallen Jedi foes as grim trophies. He was trained in the art of lightsaber combat by Count Dooku, having taught himself an unorthodox style with which to scare his enemies into letting their guard down before slaughtering them. He only retreats when necessary, not when escape is simply presenting itself, but when the odds are not in his favor. To this day, he still stands out as one of the most tragic yet amazing villains in Star Wars history, solid A in the Legends canon. Disney's canon Grievous isn't as good. He's a coward who constantly runs away, is a failure as a general, only wins with help or through cowardly sneak attacks, and always loses to Obi-Wan Kenobi, hardly fighting anyone else. A C in the Clone Wars. Overall, a B as a whole, and easily my favorite prequel villain. We also then had this comment from Gustavo Miranda who said, For me, Grievous is either an A or D character. This is due to the fact that Legends is a way better character. He loses his wife and wages an eternal war against the Huck. Then the Jedi kill and enslave his people. He then is manipulated and destroyed by the Sith in order to create their weapon against the Jedi. He went from demigod to slave to monster. He also was an efficient killer and a cunning general. Meanwhile, in the Disney canon, he chose the cybernetics and can't fight for his life. I love the Clone Wars, but man, did they do him dirty. Plus, they took away his entire motivation, which just makes it bleh. Instead of hating the Jedi because they were the ones responsible for your people's demise, 
You now hate them because you're not force sensitive? In my opinion, it makes him look weak and Grievous is a character who shouldn't be weak. He's the Darth Vader of the Clone Wars, not the emo boy who hates everyone just cuz. We also then had this comment from Antis Bulent, and forgive me, I probably just butchered your name, my friend. Anyway, they said, In canon, he's a pretty weak character. He's just a coward. In Legends, he's an amazing character with a tragic backstory. He's a badass and a strategic genius. In the movies, he doesn't get much screen time, but he looks cool. He fulfills his purpose. Just looking at the movies, I would give him a low B, with Legends an A. But then The Clone Wars comes... A great show, but on Grievous, they failed, so B. And finally, in this little block of comments, we have this one from Nugget, but on YouTube, who said, He's a pretty good example of writing a basic villain. We know everything we need to know about him from his first appearance. He shows us his lightsaber collection, letting us know he collects trophies from the Jedi he defeats. His name is General, so we know he is important. And we know that he has a lofty reputation, since Anakin says he thought he would be taller. He also has a very unique design, and it would have been very easy to make him just a boring robot, but luckily, Star Wars has never been that kind of sci-fi series. And for a villain that, in the movies, or movie I should say, is only in half of a film, he does work fine as is. He's got a really unique and cool design, one of the most unique in all of Star Wars, I'd say, and is just a fun character, as many pointed out in the comments. Yes, he does have a great yet tragic backstory in Legends, which does or would make him a much better character overall, but I would agree that the little hints they give us in the movie, like showing off his lightsaber collection, are just enough to let us know what this character is all about. Again, for one that's only going to be in half of a movie. Okay, and moving on now, we have this comment from Hollywood Jayhawk, who said, He didn't really have a character. If they went into his backstory more, or if he was in Attack of the Clones, and he was able to get character development in the movies... I'd feel better about him. I found him kind of obnoxious with the four lightsabers. In the Clone Wars, he was fine, yet not great. I give him a C. And fair enough here. I could see how the four lightsabers could be seen as a bit too much, or something Lucas wanted because it was faster and more intense, which he's kind of famous for saying during the making of the prequels. That said, I like the way his other two arms were used in the Clone Wars micro-series. You don't see them till the bitter end, which is also when the Jedi see them, at the bitter end. In other words, they're used as a secret tactic, not something he's just flaunting all the time, which I think makes them much better. As for him being in Episode 2, I like that idea quite a bit actually, at face value at least, especially if we could see him maybe wronged and disfigured or all but killed because of the Jedi, and thus coming back wanting revenge in the next movie. Problem is that role is kind of already filled by Jango, or maybe I should say by Boba Fett, the idea of someone being created because of the Jedi, or in a sense being wronged by them, especially from their point of view. Alright, let's now get to just a few more comments before wrapping this up, starting with this one from Dat Guy, who said, He's a fun and great addition to the Star Wars universe, but he isn't developed that much and isn't that intimidating. Then this comment from Here No Spidey, who said, I can't help but smile every time I see him on screen. He's a joy to watch from his maniacal laugh to his incredible design to his fantastic voice. He's not as deadly as he should be, but I still give him an A. We also then had this comment from Unofficial Meme who said, I'd give him an A if his boss fight in LEGO Star Wars had more content to it. Also this one from The Liamster who said, It depends on how many lightsabers he has in his collection. And finally, and fittingly, this one from Obi-Wan Kenobi who said, As a smaller antagonist that is meant to look cool and start a really cool lightsaber fight, he was effective and entertaining to watch. I don't think Grievous was ever intended to be a multi-layered, sympathetic character. I think he was just supposed to be the cool secondary antagonist. So, in that role, how did he perform? Rather well. He had a unique design, interesting concept, and pretty good execution. He was definitely one of the more memorable parts of the prequels, B. And I think Obi-Wan sums it up pretty well here. Again, he looked cool and worked well enough in the one movie he was in. Tarkovsky then took what was probably a pretty basic idea and created a literal monster in the Clone Wars micro-series, after which others built a great backstory for him in Legends. In the newer Clone Wars series, well, he unfortunately did kind of have that generic villain of the week feel to him. 
where he always was just foiled by the good guys and left running away in the end, promising to get his revenge some other day. And when you take the good with the bad here, the consensus seems to be you end up with a B-tier character overall. Well, that's all I've got for you this time. Now it's your turn to tell me what you think of General Grievous, or what you think of what I or anyone else had to say about him in this video. You can also head down to the comments below and, of course, nominate which character we do next, or vote if the one you'd like to see is already there. Either way, do leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.